Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please like, share, review, and subscribe. Hello, lovelies. I would like to start today by sending a thank you and a welcome to our newest high-level patron, Margot. Thank you for your generous gift to the show. I appreciate you more than I could even put into words. I also want to say thank you to my patron, Sarah. Sarah is the one who came up with the concept for this week's episode. Um, she has asked that we talk a little bit more about mediumship, how we know if spirit is really communicating with us, how to hear better, how to make sense of it, and also to address the cultural views of spirit, you know, when it comes to ghosts and hauntings and all of the things that TV makes it seem like are so common. So there are basically two conversations to have here. There's the conversation for those of you who just want to know, you know, that mom is around or, you know, whoever, not exclusively mom. And then there's also the conversation to have for those of you who actually have some legitimate mediumship qualities. The ones who know that they can feel things or think maybe they're hearing things and are questioning it or maybe just straight up know they are but are afraid of it or not sure how to control it or how to know when it's theirs or maybe when they think they could be making it up. There's, of course, the signs and the symbols that come about, and people have a tendency <laughs> to want to write these off. I would have to say that the number one thing to keep in mind here is that there are no coincidences. If you're thinking how much you wish you could talk to your best friend, and all of a sudden y'all's favorite song comes on, or you happen to see a symbol or something that reminds you of her that's not a coincidence people okay there are no coincidences the universe is highly mathematical and you can talk to to scientists and physicists and mathematicians who will support the very real idea that everything that happens comes from a logical cause and effect and you know if you want to be skeptical what does it hurt to thank coincidence for supporting you in the moment. I mean, you know, you can just call that another name for the universe. <laughs> no, listen, everyone can access their own loved ones on a subtle level. Okay, if you're thinking about them, if you are talking about them, if you are needing them, that energy exists, right? And you don't just have to lean on me or spiritual faith or anything else to know that's true. Scientists, physicists have proven that energy never totally goes away. And so we can argue that that's just some kind of electrical current. But I have to tell you, too many crazy things have happened around me for me to even think for a second that there's any way that I could have made really any of this up. I mean, there's too much shit that I know that there's no way I should know. And I have witnessed too many people having experiences that are just undeniable. You know, I have to say though, okay, no summoning, right? You don't need to sit around in some kind of circle and blah, 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 and Ouija board and this, that, and the other. I don't know anyone who actually needs to summon to contact spirit for loving reasons. And I've never met a spirit that actually wants to be scary either. The question is, what's your language? When the universe shows up in a way that is frightening, it is because it's manifest from your fear. You're showing that you need that. Okay? You know, spirit wants to be heard they want the universe wants to be felt right and if you're ignoring that it'll do whatever it takes to get your attention I have been into countless houses and other places that people believed were haunted okay and I get that okay I get what they were feeling and experiencing was totally real for them but when I got in there, that's not what was going on, okay? I mean, the, the worst one I went into, there was a woman that I 
um, that contacted me. And she had all kinds of crazy negativity going on in her home. Her friends would not use the front door. No one had used the front door of her home in years. So I come in, she lets me in the back door, which, you know, whatever, um, where all of her friends came in. And I step into that area that nobody wants to go. And all I feel is arguments, intense, ferocious arguments. And I asked her, at what point in your life did you stand right here and fight every single day? And her face just dropped. She'd lived in that home for 20 years. She lived there a long time with her ex-husband. And they fought ferociously. And somehow, so often, it ended up being right there in that front entryway of her home. All of a sudden, everything clicked. Even all of her friends who came that day, she had an entourage, they all remembered the two of them literally standing right there and just attacking each other. That recognition and the release of that energy cured the so-called haunting. There is nothing evil in spirit. You know, there's a belief that graveyards are horrible places to go and you know that there are places where bad things happened and they're haunted and terrible things can happen to you this is a cultural misrepresentation of spirit graveyards are not intrinsically bad there's nothing wrong with them in fact it's like the quietest place i go but people do stupid things there right If somebody's warning you don't go into a graveyard at night, it's because it's dark and there might be idiots there, (laughs) okay? It's not spirit that you need to be afraid of. And ghost tours and things like that, yes, things happen. Nothing bad. If it is, it's a manifestation of people and their own fears. It's (laughs) always human. The negativity is always, always human. You know, to just sort of set the page here, remember that every religious text talks about that spiritual gifts, including mediumship, are a gift from God, a quality to discern spirit. And of course, you know, it tends to be um, Christians who resist this the most. And yet in Corinthians, it talks very directly about how God gives people these spiritual gifts. If you go through the Bible, the only time it talks negatively about mediumship, it's more idol worship. It's more if you put everything into a person who can talk to spirit for you, you know, and you make them your idol, you make them your God. Or there, <laughs> it, it addresses individuals who had terrible experiences. This is very real. I've met a ton of people who have been, you know, what I call attacked by poachers. And that is somebody who was just feeding off of their faith in that individual's spiritual gift and then their desperation to talk to their past loved one. Yeah, this is bad news, (laughs) okay? But that is not what everybody is doing. And let's be clear, Jesus talked to dead people all the time. One of the most famous stories is when he talked to Elijah and Moses. So there's that, (laughs) okay? And several of the places where it talks negatively about prophecy and mediumship, these were parts of the Bible that we know historically were added by, you know, early politicians, what we call kings and popes and cardinals and stuff. So let's just put that (laughs) aside, okay? That and the fact that we don't have control over spirit, okay? I mean, they will follow our rules, which we're about to discuss, but we can't make them do bad things. The only time that this is quote unquote bad is when it's an unethical person misusing someone's trust and taking advantage. And just to be clear, the universe, karma, cause and effect will handle that. I had several people come in years ago that had all seen the same woman. 
And she had just messed with their heads, right? Filled them full of fear and negativity and entities and curses and taken a lot of money and bullshit, right? She got turned off. She got shut down. One day she was there and then she was gone. The end. You can't abuse spiritual gift without consequences. That's just a fact. And if you're premature in the pushing of that spiritual gift outward, you will fail. You got to do you first, right? So let's back up. Yes, that feather, that bird, whatever it is, that song on the radio, yes, that is your loved one. The only way it's not is if you've been focused on manifesting that thing instead of on the love and light that you send to your loved one. If you're driving around thinking white feather, white feather, white feather, white feather, you're going to manifest a white feather. But if you're driving around thinking, oh, my mother, she'd be so proud of me, or I need her right now. I love her. Thank you, mom, for filling me with this love that makes me wish you were here. And you see a white feather. That's different. You've got to understand how that's different. It seems simple, right? And so then, you know, people want to talk to their loved ones. And they don't realize when they're hearing them or not. Right? Maybe you get a physical sensation. Maybe it's a chill. Or the sense that there's a hand on your shoulder. You don't invent physical sensations like that. And then there's the hearing or the knowing. People get twisted with what's the difference between hearing and knowing. I'm going to argue that they're the same thing. That people call it knowing because it's not in their ears and they don't understand that it's hearing. I mean, it's words, right? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just the feeling of comfort and that's fantastic. But, you know, when you're thinking, mom, what would you do? Or mom, do you think I made the right decision? Or whatever, right? Right. The way to know if you're crazy or not is where it lives in your body. If you hear spirit in your ears, like you hear my voice right now, you're losing it, okay? Maybe your meds are off or something. No, I I don't mean to make fun. Um, No, when you hear it in your ears, that's when you're losing it, okay? Because we only hear human things in our ears. And the universe separates itself from our physical senses so that we know it's spirit. If it's inside your brain, like when you have a conversation with yourself about what's for lunch, that's when you're making it up, okay? And you can do that. But when you're really deeply in thought, and for the average person, this tends to happen either while driving their car, okay, or trying to go to sleep at night. It's not in your brain and it's not in your ears. It's as if it's right around you, enveloping you. But the source is not inside of you. It's just behind your head or just over your shoulder or the sensation that comes up right at the core of your being. Yes, that is them. Yes, that is real. People get in their own way. There's fear there. And I get it. There are times I have fear. And we've got all this cultural belief about it being dangerous and, and scary from movies and stuff that, that makes us afraid. And then there's a very real fact that spirit sometimes has forgotten what it's like to be human and that it's creepy as balls to have somebody standing behind you that you can't see. So make rules, beloved. I have many, many, many rules. My most important being highest good. I just flat out have set the intention that if it is not for my highest good or someone else's and it is not a message that I can deliver, I don't want it. Not everybody wants to be that extreme because if you enjoy feeling spirit and you're not put in a position every day to talk to individuals about spiritual things, then yeah, maybe you want to feel it at Target. Okay? And that's fine doesn't always mean you have to do something about it. And it doesn't always mean you're interpreting it correctly. 
So remember always, if it's negative, it's not real or you're misunderstanding. So ask questions, lots and lots and lots of questions, okay? Because the biggest thing that puts fear throughout this community, throughout this spiritual gift, and makes people afraid of mediums and prophets and things is this idea that it's evil. And this comes because people don't interpret the symbols, If someone tells you that you have a negative entity attached to you, if someone tells you there's some negative spirit following you around, they're not looking deep enough. They're not looking below for what's the message there. Because the message there is always something like she needs to release her grief or all of this negative thinking is manifesting negative things. And so we can get caught up on the symbols. And that, sure, Let me tell you, that releases a lot of responsibility to be able to say that there's some haunting going on around me or whatever, and that this is the cause of everything bad in my life. That releases responsibility. You're able to say, oh, it's not my fault. And if you need that, that's fine. I'm definitely not the person for you. And this podcast is definitely not for you because 100%, I know that when we claim responsibility and we understand that it's all an outworking of our own actions and thoughts and whatever, that we can 100% turn our lives around, change our thinking and our experience. So with that said, create rules. Mine include all kinds of things, okay? One of them is do not walk up on me if I'm walking through the house in the dark, (laughs) okay? One is don't stand outside my windows. That shit's creepy, right? Don't do that. Don't just stand behind me, okay? Now, many of us do have protection, divine protection. Some people call it a guardian angel. Okay, you call it whatever you want. That's all semantics. But the energy that stands behind me and protects me, I want it there 24-7. Don't get me wrong. But if I can feel it while I'm sitting around watching TV, that shit's creepy. So that's one of my rules, right? Be here with me, protect me, but I don't want to feel you unless I need to because I'm feeling endangered. Or I'm talking about you, okay? I have the rule that they're not allowed to wake me up from my bed unless it is to save my life or the lives of my children. They're not allowed to come into my bathroom unless it is to save my life or the lives of my children, right? Having spirit around us is fantastic. They're super helpful. But to be poking into all of our human experiences is not. And so as you venture through this, you add whatever rules that you want. But do know that if it's multiple people within a house, each person has to make their own rules. I have one family that I see, and they all came to see me at one time. They come separately, but they came together this time because of activity in their house. And three out of the four of them set rules and quit having the negative experiences. The fourth one didn't, (laughs) right? She didn't. She didn't set the rules because she kind of enjoyed it. So she continued having negative experiences. I did go into one person's house and the grandmother had been moving things and stuff like that. And once I confirmed that that really was that and she didn't have anything to be afraid of, she didn't actually want the activity to stop. So fine. But that said, also be clear, like if you're desiring something that massive to happen, don't hold your breath, okay? Because most of the time they're not going to move the pictures on the walls and things like that. That's crazy, right? Spirit is subtle and it should be because we're here for a human experience. But also, don't ever think they've abandoned you because that's not real either. People tell me, you know, right after she died, I felt her all the time and now I never feel her. You're not looking subtle enough. If she's quote unquote gone, it's because you weren't dealing with your grief. And so they step back and they become even more subtle for the desire for human quality of the ability to kind of forget things to come up, okay? I mean, there's a reason why you don't remember the pain of breaking your leg when you were a kid or of childbirth or whatever. We are designed to, you know, forget painful things. And spirit will step away if they think that being too close is making it harder for you to recover. 
So make rules, whatever rules that you want. But also just get out of your own way. Quit overthinking shit. I mean, you, you do have to trust, right? There's a feeling, there's a knowing, and it's outside of your brain. So observe. Observe what that is. Observe how it feels when you're driving in your car and talking to your father. Observe how it's comforting all of a sudden. And then know if what you're getting is doing nothing but agitating you. It's got one of two reasons. Either it's to make you think about the negative and maybe laugh at yourself or solve the problem. But more than not, (laughs) okay, it's you getting in your own way and letting your fear talk to you instead of the comfort of spirit. So just remember, in the spirit world, there's nothing to fear. Everything scary is human, period. Everything scary is human. Spirit is not scary. And if it's scaring you, it's because you weren't paying attention. Okay, I have had people come in and say they saw a big dark figure at the foot of their bed or whatever. That is because she wasn't listening to the whisper. She knew, right? Maybe it was that she knew she needed to get rid of the abusive man sleeping next to her and she didn't and she didn't and she didn't. And Spirit said, hey, maybe if I scare the crap out of her, she'll change something. You don't have to set yourself up to be scared by the universe. Listen. Listen to what you know. Trust your intuition. Act from there. And know that when spirit shows up, it's to support you. Now, there are the cases of, um, you know, spirit guides and those of us who have spirits who are here to take a more active role in our lives. That's a different conversation. The spirits of loved ones are always here to love and support And those with mediumship qualities, sometimes they're groupies, (laughs) okay? They know you can see them. They know you can feel them. They want to be around you. They're never there to hurt you, right? If anything, they're neutral. So you can set rules that makes them, you know, quit being dicks if they're (laughs) – I don't mean that. You know, if they're moving things to get your attention, if they're making noises, like they're not trying to scare us. They're trying to get our attention. And you can make rules against that. That's fine right? I rarely suggest saying go away and don't come back because having spirit around you is helpful. Like I said, don't bother me unless you're going to save my life or the lives of my children, right? It's okay. They're not naughty voyeurs either, right? They're not trying to watch you shower for some weird reason. But I do have a rule. They're not allowed in my shower unless they're going to save my life or the lives of my children. And our rules work. You are powerful enough to make your own rules around spirit. So do it. If you don't have faith in yourself, someone like I can help you with that. Someone like I, someone like me. (laughs) But the truth is we do have the power to do it. Sometimes early in the process we do need help. But be clear. Nobody should be coming around saying, you know, you have to have me do it for you. They can do it for you, and they can explain to you what you can do for you. But there does have to be some level of faith and trust, and it's never about the tools, okay? The tools are just helpful. If you're walking around with sage thinking the sage is going to do magic for you, that's not accurate. Sage is a tool. It's who's using the tool and the intention in which it is used. My sweet husband tried to sage the house for me one time, (laughs) and it was very sweet. But he was just walking around burning sage. That's not going to do it, you guys. These are tools. They're not even necessary. But they are helpful because they help set the intention in our concrete human mind. So use it if you want to. But remember, it's not magic. The magic comes from our knowing deep down that it's all good all the time. And when it seems like it's not, it's trying to get our attention so we can learn and we can grow. Because after all, everything comes right back to life school. What do I learn? How do I grow? What do I keep? When do I let go? That's it. Whether it's spirit, 
or human or anything else. It's all about who we're becoming. Pretty cool. Till next time, beloved. Namaste. Thank each and every one of you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. If you haven't already found me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, come and find me there and join the conversation. My Facebook family is growing and we want you there with us. If you are inspired by the podcast, please consider clicking the green patron button. Not only will your support help keep us going and growing, but also coming very soon, there will be some patron-only content saved just for those of you that choose to help keep us on the air. If you haven't received word, Maybe you haven't been following on social media. I am also offering some educational sessions for people inspired by the podcast that would like to learn and know more. You can find detailed information about that in the About section on my Facebook page. I want to send you each light and love, clarity and wisdom. I know always that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back. Until next time, beloved, namaste.